Hello, and uh, let's uh, take a look at uh, a couple of ways to create what I like to call web graphics or uh, little 3D uh, <laughs> gadgets and widgets, perhaps uh, a 3D logo or elements you might want to put into a, um, you know, a Photoshop 3D layer or a, um, some other uh, 3D elements in an illustration. And um, one easy way to do that is perhaps with the uh, Create Line tool, and uh, you just draw that first line and uh, if it's not perfect if it's too uh, you know wavy or has some little disruptions over that first thing you can do is use s or shift s even to go faster that's that's a uh, a tool to to smooth it and it's not just to smooth uh, surfaces or polygon uh, facets but also the currently selected curve so you want to make sure you right click on the curve to make that the selected curve and then you can go here and if you draw some more elements let's say if you if you undo that and then let's say you draw a curve like this and then you draw on the other end one size and the other on this one here a smaller one it will also dictate the size so it, it changes the size from one end to the other this is something let's hit the space bar here and do a couple more right this is something that you can use to create all sorts of dinosaur teeth or or weird looking underwater sea creatures right and now quite commonly you might want to uh, work on all this as a single object so there is a quick tool here to merge it all together and when you do that it may look a little bit yucky at first but just use that same smoothing tool again s a few times or shift s and soon enough you'll see uh, everything coming together quite nicely in fact if I look at it at a single view here and rotate it around a little bit in 3D, you can see it's got some beautiful transitions. So this is a great way to get started. Um, at this point, we don't have those construction curves anymore. We've converted that to a mesh, and there's a whole lot of more things we can do with that. Just like um, when it is a construction curve, we can do use the widget move to edit, but instead of editing or moving uh, the points on the construction curve, we're now moving the vertices on the surface mesh. So if I'm grabbing this here, it's going to move out. And right now, the, the shape is very tight here, so that actually is what's causing these very spiky extrusions. That's a great feature to uh, use in some sort of uh, 3D logo that you might want to create. You can move it to the inside and create all sorts of little dimple holes. You can even move it through and it comes back out to the other side. So uh, a lot of fun stuff you can do with that. There's also uh, all sorts of uh, warping tools, warp inflate for instance, to make it a little bit fatter in this area here. Give it a little bubble here. Uh, then there is the, in fact, there is a, a sphere here that allows you to set how, how big that influence is for the warping, right? So now I'm still doing the warp inflate, and it's going to be, or the deflate. Let's go the other way around here. There you go. And you can use undo if you have a result you don't like too much. There you go. Do a couple of inflations like this. Uh, and then this one here is one of my favorites, too. Uh, this one is the warp smooth to kind of bring it back together. And then the opposite of that is to, to make it very nervous looking or, or you know, to, to uh, create all sorts of disruptions along these polygons. Uh, that again, you can also go and you know smooth it again. So you can say, no, I need this uh, kind of lean over here. Um, then you also have a couple of others. Uh, there's the the rotate widget rotate tool um, that allows you to grab a point and and sort of twist it around. And that also is uh, certainly a great tool to explore and. Uh, you know, basically uh, let your imagination go wild here. You can do a scale, you can change the scale uh, of the influence of, of how far those points will come with it and how many other points move with it. Or if you um, if you bring the scale to a very small amount, uh, it's really just uh, whatever you pick, that, that vertex that's moving out. And if there's only a few vertices left, uh, you'll see some very different results coming out here. Look at that. This one I'm moving in. So you get little holes or dimples there. Um, there's also a 3D painting on top of that. So you can uh, paint displacement maps. Uh, you can add um, uh, texture maps and uh, uh, change the, um, the amount of bump mapping there too. So there's, that's a bump map that I'm applying here. There's a highlight map to change uh, the reflection or the, the, the shininess. Um, there is uh, the, the color map, and you can actually go and just paint directly on that. But you know, if you're using Photoshop or some other tools uh, for painting your colors, you might want to use those as well. So there's a, a plethora of ways to use this all together. Um, the, the the beauty of this is that it's not just made for itself. You can you, you can of course export that um, to.